Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. We'll be talking about assets that last for generations, that are virtually indestructible and, of course, durable through these unfortunate economic times. There's always opportunities, and that's what we really want to discuss today. You know, Jerry, gold and silver really are... A, we were talking about uh, the FDIC and Canadian Insurance Deposit corporation and you know gold and silver are really the insurance policy against the declining value of the currency there was a time where money meant both the store of value and the unit of exchange today we have the unit of exchange which is the Canadian dollar or the US dollar that's a fiat currency but we conflate and call it money but it's not. It's just a currency. It was separated back in 1971. So we call it money, which is a mistake. Correct. It's a currency. Money should be a store of value. And if it was a store of value, then a cup of coffee would still be 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Right? That's 20, right. 30 years after the fact. You would not be dealing with central banks that want you to believe inflation is a good thing. And you should be happy to lose 2% of your money a year every year which is 20% of your purchasing power every decade. That's 40% every two decades, which is absolutely highway robbery when you realize what's actually happening. So gold and silver, the fact that they're up already in the triple digits and still incredibly undervalued against the debt and limited in supply, you know that there's a lot of room to run, which is why we are here, you know, more than a decade after we started this show, where gold and silver are up over two, 300% since we started this radio show, and yet it's still an incredible opportunity. Still because undervalued. they're undervalued against how quickly you can go into debt. They're adding, they're adding what, a, a, trillion, a trillion dollars every 100 days in the United States. It's, we are past, we're at a velocity stage here. So things could disrupt quickly. And I noticed as well that we're starting to see clients who are less comfortable storing their product at home, even smaller amounts. They're saying, look, I don't want, I don't feel safe in Canada. I don't feel safe in what used to be very safe neighborhoods, just taking that added precaution. And that's where the depository comes in because it's, it's physically secured, mm -hmm. gated, cameras. No in, fractional reserve. No one fractional. One. Thank you. Fully insured, backed by Lloyd's of London, ability to buy and sell on a phone call. So there's a lot of reasons to be considering that. Let's, let's get into economic warfare. Now, before we do, I want to segue using the Federal Reserve because there's been some crazy news this week. Absolutely crazy news with regard to the Federal Reserve this week. A lot of news, a lot of attention now being focused upon the Federal Reserve. Obviously, next week is FOMC. The Financial Stability Board came out with their new report. So all attention is back on the Fed. Um, and next week, Wednesday, they're going to be keeping their rates flat at 5.5. At but, um, you know, the, the Federal Reserve is, being, uh, is on the hot seat once again. Uh, Jeremy, as we love to keep them on the hot seat, why the Fed... The Fed's inflation of the money supply has been ongoing since it began operation in 1914. It drained 96% of the dollar's purchasing power. And yes, we believe, thanks to MSM, that this, do this dollar is money. The dollar is not the dollar, the constitutional dollar. It is the Federal Reserve note. It's a fiat currency. It is not constitutional. And just... Today, in fact, this morning, and what's going around Twitter and X and around social media is a new Orange Mad Bad policy. If he comes into presidency next term, the advisors for Trump will be revamping the Federal Reserve. Now, I was reminded of the, the fun usdebtclock.org this week. Because if you click the secret window in the top right, and I urge everyone to take a look today, usdebtclock.org, click the top right. It talks about silver revaluation and the silver revaluation up to $200 an ounce. And now this is very, this is very 
interesting because the Federal Reserve or the U.S. had to revalue the gold price. So we feel a revaluation is a solution to all of the debt because no, there is not enough gold, but gold at the right price. Yes, you have enough gold to back up the entire system. Jerry, I'd like to just go back for a moment here. You mentioned that uh, we'll, we'll call him the OMB, Orange Man Bad, that that his advisors want to take away the independence of the Federal Reserve. Is that correct? Yes. Now, a couple things. Now, you would think that, that um, and I know we saw an article already out by Routers, kind of the Project Mockingbird source, one of them, already criticizing that move because the big criticism is always – and I want to point out an irony here. The criticism is always, don't take away the independence of the Federal Reserve, right? That's right. That's what you hear parroted by MSM, Powell, all of the, all of the people on, in, in the Fed. We need to maintain our independence. And yet, the biggest irony of that is they, call, they are a private corporation that called themselves the Federal Reserve to make people think that they are not independent, <laughs> to make them think that they are part of the government. That's exactly. why they call themselves federal. Like Federal Express. Like the reserve, like they are part of the government. So how can you, how can you on one hand call yourself something to make it appear as though you're not independent and then criticize anyone that wants to take your independence away? Mm -hmm. It's a Trojan horse, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing, that's what it is, and this is Reuters today. The dollar will suffer if the Fed's independence is blunted. King dollar may reign no more if Donald Trump decides to throw a spanner into the U.S. monetary policy machine. There's a potential of him becoming a board member, Jeremy. And with Judy Shelton, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve is on the hot seat. And the mainstream media is just panicking. And, you know, I have a big smile on my face because I've been waiting for this. You know, ever since Ron Paul was running for president, his campaign was end the Fed. Maybe not end the Fed, Jeremy. Maybe the solution is to revamp the Federal Reserve. The machine can work with the right tools inside, with the right assets inside, and to go back to a dollar. And, and but but this 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 comment from Reuters was was kind of baffling to me because it, it made it seem like four years with with Bidenomics, uh, we've we've seen a huge trend of de-dollarization. So really, the spanner in being thrown into the U.S. monetary policy machine isn't a Trump policy. It's actually Bidenomics that caused how many countries have moved away from the U.S. dollar. We have Russia and China almost finished trading U.S. dollars in oil. You have countries around the world without fear, uh, such as Ch Chad in Africa. They're now nationalizing Exxon's mine, the audacity to do these things. Uh, but... Another Trump policy says, well, the Trump advisor said they will actually punish those. In the, in, if you want to de-dollarize in the future, future he's going to make sure that the de-dollarization trend ends. How can you do that? Okay. How can you end the de-dollarization? De it's by backing it up with gold. This is so good. <laughs> this is so is. good. Okay, so we can keep going. So you have, you have a flank attack here saying... We're going to take away the independence. On the other hand, you have the current administration in the U.S. that has weaponized the dollar to begin with, right? We're going to seize assets. And if we're going to seize assets of one, of one country, we could seize the assets of any country. So you have the BRICS getting together and saying, well, we better, we better you know, um, circle the wagons here and figure something out. And so they start with the BRICS and they're all buying gold like crazy. And then you have um, OMB coming out and saying, well, we're, I don't know if he came out and said it or his advisor said it, that taking, taking what Biden administration is trying to do with weaponizing the dollar, right? We're going to seize your assets. That seems a pretty strong move. Seems like a punishment, but instead everyone's running away and making it a bad thing for the dollar. And then... The other side is saying, no, no, we're going to punish you if you if you try to leave the dollar or do anything like this. So he's saying exactly what Biden is doing, but he's going to do it in a completely different way, which could be by backing with gold. How can you bring credibility back to a shot currency? But how does that punish someone? 
Well, the the headline goes. I mean, this is debatable. This is like new headlines that we're now dealing with. You know, we don't know exactly which way this is going to go, but the headline goes: Trump advisors discuss penalties. This is from Bloomberg. Penalties for nations that move away from the dollar. Now, what type of penalties? We don't know. We know in his last his last president is during his four years, he used a lot of tariffs uh, to success. Um, now, you know. Maybe a, maybe a good fear is a good thing. We don't know. Well, I'm I'm coming at it from an angle that it's got to be something where the dollar becomes r- something you want to have. And if you miss and then, out, and then if you don't want to be a part of it, you're missing out. You're missing out. Uh-huh. That's the angle that I'm I'm intuiting from this. Is it's not we're just trying to punish willy nilly. Sure. It's no no we're going to make it something that everybody wants to have. And it will be a punishment if you don't want to be a part of it or can't be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like on the outside looking in. If you feel that you want to go the route of the World Economic Forum central bank digital currency, which where is, is digital, Klaus Schwab? Where is that guy? I don't where know. is he? <laughs> I, have I haven't no heard. Idea. I haven't heard from him for weeks. But this tit for tat that we're seeing this week was financial warfare. This was just back and forth because of de-dollarization. This is a trend that's. It's getting worse and worse. Now, last week, we saw a little dip on the market in precious metals and U.S. dollar. Gold and silver were down, hitting a nice support. 2330 was a nice carved support for gold and silver. We hit a nice support of about $27.15, which was my support level. Uh, nicely for Canadians, this is a great op- opportunity for Canadian dollar buying as the loonie actually started to surge. So you get more purchasing power. But it was a week of dips in the market in precious metals. Because the narrative from the MSM, the mainstream media, was that the, the, the tension in the Middle East is subsiding, it's de-escalation, so there's no need for a safe haven. Okay, the military uh, warfare may be subsiding, although it's kind of picking up in the South China Sea with Taiwan. But the real warfare has been financial warfare, Jeremy, back and forth. And if we look what happened this week, first it was the U.S. that seized Russian assets and gave to Ukraine. Okay. The day after that, Russia started to seize 500 million assets from J.P. Morgan. And then today, you have further Russian retaliation. Say Russia says it now has the right to confiscate all Western assets in Russia worth more than 288 billion dollars. This tit for tat's going to continue, Jeremy. I don't know how this is going to end, but it it's it's picking up geopolitical. Warfare. This is one of the four pillars that Guildhall talks about. Geopolitics. You got to pay attention to this stuff. Do not ignore these trends. You know, when we, I used to always think of geopolitics as kinetic sort of things, right? Blocking off the Straits of Hormuz or whatnot. But over the years, you know, you think of Jim Rickards and currency wars, and you start to realize that geopolitics is more about the currency wars. And in some ways, that can be more detrimental than the kinetic events that could possibly be happening. But hang hang with us for a second, because I know the mainstream news always wants to try to tie kinetic events to precious metals. That's not always the case. You'd be surprised at what the bigger answer is. So stick with us and you'll find out why the prices are moving in either direction and how it absolutely has nothing to do with any kinetic events. The number 18778silver, the website guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number 18778silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. If you're looking to build a nest egg for your family, for yourself, having real wealth is one of the ways to go about that. And that would be holding physical gold and physical silver. Now, we're not advisors, but from my own personal story, I started buying gold back in 2006. And it was, I think, 480, 580. You know, at the time it matters, in the fullness of time, it stops mattering what price you paid. But, but originally, I just wanted to get, you know, 10, 15 ounces, put it in a safety deposit box, hope I never had to touch it. I figured having it in a safety deposit box meant if I wanted to sell it, I'd have to drive to the bank, go get the safety deposit box, pull it out, put the safety deposit box back, bring it to wherever I was selling at the time. And then, you know, it's a big, it's a big to do. It's not like going onto an app or calling a broker. And it was the best decision I ever made. Now, I've never sold a single ounce. I've only added to it. 
But if you think about gold being at obviously under $600 an ounce to where it is today, okay, it didn't pay a dividend. You want to say it's volatile? Ask me if I care, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's a relic? Okay, that, I'll take that relic to go from 600 to 2400. I'll along, take it. Along with the world. Along with the world. So having an asset is what helps make people wealthy, having assets, not investments per se. You know, there's lots of people with investments. People with investments that are down 20%, 30%, 50%. You know, it's it, there, there's nothing wrong with having a diversified portfolio, and I hope may, people are making lots of money in crypto, and they've made lots of money in Tesla and everything else. But there's also something to be said for having assets, actual assets. So when you're building a nest egg, something that you can pass on to kids, ask yourself if the the companies that are in the stock market, if they were around a hundred years ago, mm -hmm, exactly. Most of them are not. Right, most of them were not around a hundred years ago. Majority, mm -hmm. probably more than ninety-five percent, were not around a hundred years ago. But gold was, and a hundred years ago, gold was trading at thirty-five dollars an ounce. Mm -hmm. So I love what what Ron Paul said recently on an interview where he said, "Well, you know, it was trading at twenty-five in the early thirties, and you tacked on a zero in the seventies, and now you've tacked on a zero today. And given how quickly things are going, right?" He said in his lifetime, it would, you'd tack on another zero. And he's no spring chicken. Right. So, and I understand where he's coming from that. You know, he, he understands. He wrote the book, the, the Case for Gold, and he understands well what the Fed is all about and how they manipulate money, uh, or the currency, I should say, and why you want to own physical precious metals as a hedge against that, and that it will do very well because its purchasing power will increase. That's why we're that's why we're so excited about the market. Exactly. And when we see a transition in any type of financial system throughout history, and then one thing about Ron Paul, he's a historian as well. And gold and silver has have just adapted to any type of system that came 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 into power, came into play. And as we are in the cusp of seeing a financial reset, refi uh, refinancialization, remonetization of the gold market, this is the reason why countries are going after gold. One of those countries is the, Thai, the Thailand's uh, pension fund. It's $35 billion, and Jamie Carrasco out of Canaccord Genuity in Toronto this week, did a, uh, he tweeted, he X this week on that, and urging, as we have done as well, for the Canadian pension fund to include physical gold for your people. If it's good for the Thai people, the Thai people were happy with it. It's a responsible asset. It's an asset that has stood the test of time. Why wouldn't you want that in your pension fund? So I, again, I, we're arguing for that. Get gold in your portfolio. Now is the time. Look at the market. Look at the market soberly. Not in a very short time frame, though. Anything can look volatile. But if you take a sober step back and look at gold throughout 20, 40 years, this is a straight, clear up trend. The cup and handle is our friend, and we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, and you know, before a break, we were talking about some of these kinetic events that are happening, and that I've always noticed in the gold market that you would see these moves, and that the mainstream financial media would would peg a reason to it that was completely just kind of leafs in the wind in terms of what what it meant, of what the move meant. And it just has always occurred to me that there's a much, much bigger picture to the precious metals and the pricing than simply saying, oh, here's a reason for you today, mm -hmm. right? Um, I like tennis. And in tennis, it's kind of like when for you to get the ball over, you kind of need like five things to go right. But if you can get three out of five, it'll get over the net. Right? It doesn't, not everything has to be perfect. But you'll see the mainstream news go, here's the one reason. Why you should beware. Yeah, or, or here's the one reason it did this or that. And you just kind of say, it's not, it's not that simple. It's a lot more nuanced than that. But there is a much bigger, bigger picture. So I was watching a George Gammon uh, video this past week, and he was looking for correlations because that's what he does. He's a correlation guy. He, he's always looking at this chart and that chart, and he's trying to look for correlations. And so just what I told you, he was trying to do the same thing. He's like, well, is it kinetic events? Is it this? Is it this? What drove the market? Et cetera, et cetera. 
took him 20 minutes and I'm like yelling <laughs> at the screen. And then he finally said, no, there's no correlation with any of this. It's a super cycle for, for commodities. They happen to go in 10 decade cycles. And if you've ever read uh, Jim Rogers book, Hot Commodities, he talks about this, that it basically goes in opposite to equities and that commodities booms tend to happen for 10 years. Now, George Gammon was basically saying this one started in 2020 and it'll go to 2030. And this is the bigger, bigger picture. Now we could add to that and say, well, it's part of the debts. You created all the debts. That's going to have to be paid for somehow. It means prices are going to go up all over the place because you've dub If I take, if I'm the banker in Monopoly and I come out and bring another tray of dollars, if you're still using dollars on Monopoly, and I bring out another tray of money or currency, prices everywhere are going to double. Your park yep. place is going to double in price because I've doubled the amount of currency in circulation on the board. This is, this is the, the brilliance of, of Monopoly, by the way. <laughs> So that's how it works. So if you're going to keep printing money and the debts are going to go to 35 trillion and they're going to go higher than that, you can guarantee the prices of gold are going to keep going and they can't catch up to how much you can print right away. So right on. I mean, in, in echoing the cycle, this is what we talked about and we brought up Jim Rickard's third cycle. The third bull market in gold and in silver has already begun. It started when gold hit 1050 and it does happen in, in decades. Uh, from 1971 to 80, gold went from 35 to 800. That's 2,200 percent. And then from 1999 to 2011, gold went from 250 to 1900. That's 670 percent. And then if we began the third cycle, which we're in right now, that started in 2015 at 1,050 gold. And if we apply the same type of gains in the previous two cycles, we would have approximately. $15,000 per ounce silver. And that would put silver at a 20 to 1 ratio at about $940 an ounce. Oh, you mean gold would be at 15000 15000 yeah. applied the, If we applied the two um, appreciation, the, the gains in the previous two cycles, we would have $15,000 gold. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. I would be very happy if silver went to 900 but let's get to 50 first, uh, which we believe it will go to. And by the way, I am surprised more and more people are uh, believe that without any reservation that silver can easily go to triple digits. I find every day more and more people just ha know that it's going to go, yep. that it's inevitable. It is. Um, the number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. If you're familiar with The Real Money Show, you know this is the point in the show where we start talking really fast and because we have a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> By the way, if you've missed a show, please check us out on YouTube. Uh, just check out Guildhall Wealth on YouTube. You can check out some past shows. We are putting the show up on Spotify as well as Rumble, which is slowly growing. Nice to, nice to see that. And if you're a Telegram fan, you can follow us on Telegram and X. We're, we've been doing some good stuff on X. Really liking the information that's coming out. Speaking of which, I know that uh, Vince Lancey, uh, he's, he does a, a piece every day now on Arcadia. He was he was uh, talking a lot about Michael Oliver, who's a great analyst in the market, who had a whole piece on silver saying, get in or get out. <laughs> Basically, like, it is time to get into the silver market because things are really taking off. And, uh, you know, all the charts and everything from, the, from that perspective, the analytical perspective looks really good. But then also from the fundamental perspective, now from the supply demand fund fundamental side, there's even more. And I know that the information you were looking at, Vince Lancey also follows him. Now, what we're seeing right now in the silver market is, is the most exciting thing happening in the world. The silver market is the financial system's Achilles heel. And when we were talking about financial warfare, this is part of that, that scenario. When you have silver premiums at about 3 to $4 higher than, than the U.S., what that does, it sets up arbitrage where this is the reason why we're seeing a leaking, a draining out of silver supply out of North America, and it's heading eastbound. 
as that drain, the COMEX, becomes threatened, this is why we were talking about, well, I talked about COMEX 589, the rule 589. What happens when the COMEX defaults? If they cannot deliver on the physical that they're promising, they default. And this happens very, very rapidly. And they're putting the pedal to the metal. So much so in China, according to the Oriental Ghost who we follow, there's approximately three months worth of silver left in the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Three months, Jeremy. This is silver squeeze at the highest acceleration point possible. Yes, get in or get out because the physical silver market, the premiums are starting to rise. And this is one of those signs that we could just pass on to you, the listener. If you're following the market, this is a, an amazing opportunity. And just back to the, the third cycle in precious metals. Third cycle means it happens. It, this is something that just happens uh, because of the debts, about about repositioning, about about the currency. We have a fiat currency is, system that's dying. Is this a little bit like a Fibonacci, like third wave? That's exactly what we're talking about. So um, if we applied the gains from the past two cycles, which is approximately 1,435%, uh, that puts gold at about $15,000 per ounce. And at silver to gold ratio of 20 to 1, that puts silver at approximately $750 per ounce. I just want to interrupt there. Just to understand that in 1980, gold hit 850. The Dow was at 850. That was a 1 to 1 ratio. In 2011, we hit a 4 to 1 ratio. So for gold to hit 15,000, that would mean the Dow comes off from 39 down to 30. Mm -hmm. And gold goes up to 15, and that would be a 2 to 1 ratio. That's right. And you were just saying what it, how much did it cost, how many years ago for a thousand ounces of silver? Uh, it's about <laughs> uh, eighteen years ago, okay. and I paid about, f I want to say five eighty. You're so lucky. So today's price for a thousand ounces, you're looking at about in Canadian dollars, approximately forty two thousand Canadian dollars. Now we've applied that gain at a silver to gold ratio, seven hundred fifty dollars per ounce. That puts uh, that's about a 3,000% growth in silver. If you were to outlay 42,000, get your hands on 1,000 ounces of silver, 3,000% gain, that puts your return at $1.26 million Canadian. Now, is a Canadian dollar worth anything then? We don't know. But the, but the beautiful thing about physical gold and physical silver, you can convert into any currency you'd like. You're never cornered in this, in this game. But how can that change your life? 1.26 million, are you still looking to buy a house? Buy some silver. This is the opportunity. Are you looking to pay off the house? This is the opportunity. You want to give yourself and your family room, especially with the craziness happening with tax, with capital gains taxes, and especially with headlines like this coming from better, better, betterdwelling.com. Toronto mortgage delinquency rate surges 71% higher, Jeremy. 71%. This is a, a unsustainable trend, and we don't know exactly how this is going to play out in downtown Toronto. Yeah, with physical gold, you don't necessarily need mortgage insurance because you've got the other asset to cover if you need it, right? But that's incredible. I... You know, I'm very conservative. I'd like to see silver get to 50 first. I know we're going to get there, and I know that when we do, there'll be even more people interested because it'll be making headlines as it's going to be at all-time highs all of a sudden. But it still has so much room to go after that. And also, if you think about Mexico has banned open pit mining, that's like 50% of their mining. They're, I think, third largest silver uh, producers in the world, uh, or definitely in the top five. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a long time before you can really ramp up production on silver. Meanwhile, the price has already taken off. The, the horse has bolted from the stable. So consider having some physical precious metals in a portfolio today, given the amount of debts out there, the lack of an insurance funding, the lack of investment. We talked about pension funds not even holding it yet. We're only just starting to see that. What about the economic warfare we've talked about? What if there's more back and forth on financial warfare? What if the Federal Reserve decides, hey, we're going to back the currency with gold and, and revamp, and then that way we can pay off our debts? Why not ride those coattails? The BRICs are buying gold. China's buying gold. Central banks are buying gold. The question becomes, why aren't you doing what the smart money's doing? Give it a consideration. The number 18778 silver, the website guildhallwealth.com. 
it is a hard asset. It is a strong asset. It's dependable and durable, and it lasts a lifetime. It's outlasted civilizations. And remember, you can hold it in an RSP and a TFSA, a Lira, a LIF, a RIF, an RESP. Give us a call. We'll show you how to do it. It's yours. You can go and personally audit the holdings. This is owned directly by you, not an investment. It is asset allocation in a portfolio that is wealth. Again, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to our listeners for joining us here on The Real Money Show. We can't wait to speak to you next week here on AM640.